From the News Channel 5 Network, this is Inside Politics. Hello, everyone. I'm News Channel 5's political analyst, Pat Nolan. Welcome to Inside Politics. One of the high-profile races coming up in the August primary is the 4th District Congressional race. It's also one of the longest-running with active campaigning going on there close to a year and a half. Dr. Scott Desjardins is trying to win his third term in the House of Representatives. He's our guest this week on Inside Politics. Congressman, thank you for joining us on the show. Pat, always a pleasure to be with you. Now, serving only two years, House members always seem to be in campaign mode, but this time it feels like you've had active opposition almost since you won your second term in November 2012. Does this kind of get tiring for you, especially for your family? Well, campaigning is you know, a necessary evil for a House representative seat. It occurs every two years, and you know, but I think that we've done a good job of focusing on the job we were elected to do and, and focus pretty much through the first year and a half on getting things done. Now, your major opponent is State Senator Jim Tracy. He seems to have a lot of endorsements. Do you feel like you're having to take on the entire Republican establishment in this state in order to win a third term? Well, you know, as far as endorsements go, I think the, the main endorsement is that of your constituents and right now there seems to be a real uh, anti-government anti-Washington se sentiment so I'm not sure that lining up a, a big list of politicians behind you is the best strategy now you had some personal problems that were outlined in a divorce case that occurred before you were in public office they've not been raised directly as far as I know by Senator Tracy but you have certainly been in the bullseye from some of the national media outlets I want to talk to you about comedian and TV host Bill Maher who has you in a social media tweet 16 contest he wants his viewers to pick which congressman by tweet they'd like to flip out of office mm -hmm. you seem to be his personal favorite let me read you a quote that he had on his show the other night he said Dr. Desjardins is a family values pro-life guy who had affairs with six, at least six women in his clinic please Jesus let it be this guy unquote now, your office declined comment about that. Do you have anything to say? Do you have any reaction to that? Well, I would just say if you can get a liberal comedian like Bill Maher concerned about my conservative voting record to the, to the extent that he would put me on a HBO series, then I, I guess that we must be doing something right. How does this play in your district? Your district is not exactly the big city. No, it stretches. Murfreesboro now is, is a pretty big city for us, so that's a <laughs> that's bit of true. a change. But, uh, you know, we've certainly been the fodder for... Uh, both opponents, media, and uh, left-wingers ever since I've been running for office, but you know, I ran on a, a platform, I've executed that platform, uh, I think voters are very happy with my voting record, and so it's natural when somebody can't attack you on the good job you're doing that they're going to try to come after you personally. Now there's a poll in your race that was been conducted by an outside group, they say there's been an orchestrated smear campaign, as they put it, to to, to get you, to oust you on this matter. They, is that actually helping you in the district? Is, is, are people believing this poll? It shows you up two to one. That's, I yeah. think that's a larger margin than anybody would have predicted. Well, it's the only poll that we've seen publicly released to this point. And, uh, but usually outside mm -hmm. polls, by, particularly by PAC groups, are suspect on their face just because they come from a group that has an int apparent interest in the race. Well, I would say then that would certainly give my opposition a chance to refute it. And uh, I know that uh, two major polls have been done according to FEC reports, but yet uh, we hear nothing but crickets as far as opposition to that poll. Now, the polling group, the group that did the polling, is called Citizens for Ethics in Government. What's their relationship to your campaign? Well, I think that there's a lot of conservative groups out there that like to protect candidates that do what they said they do when they go to office and have a conservative voting record. So I think that there's probably several conservative groups that are looking at this race and know that I've been one that's uh, not afraid to buck the establishment and not be beholden to special interest groups. But you have no direct relationship your campaign. I don't think the law allows it for outside groups to have Right. No, I have no say in what they do. Now, the Knoxville News Sentinel reports that back in 2012, this same group, at least portions of it, their PAC, attacked your colleague Diane Black when she was running for re-election. Do you expect them to do anything similar? Do you expect any of the outside groups to get in this race and start doing any TV or attacks as we go down this final month? Yeah, I have no idea. I, I don't know what they'll do or, or what drives what they do. Now, Senator Tracy has already been on the air for several weeks introducing himself to voters. Uh, you ran a good bit of television in your first mm -hmm. two campaigns. I look on the air and I hear crickets from your campaign. Are you going to be yeah. running any TV? Well, we will have TV. When do you think you're going to be starting? It'll be soon. Now, are, you, are you going to start before early voting starts, which is only about 10 days away? Yeah, we, we intend to, yes. Now, your fundraising has been nowhere near what you had in your two previous campaigns. Uh, you, we've just come past another deadline 
to start mm -hmm. to make a, a filing with the FEC in the next couple of weeks. When, when will you be filing yours, and what will we see in this that's different from before? Uh, do you have some money in the bank? Uh, you're going to see enough resources to win this race. And that would be how much? Uh, I don't disclose my numbers. Now, well, you'll have to disclose. You, you'll see them on June 15th or, or July 15th or 16th. Now, normally an incumbent congressman has plenty of money, and they get support from yeah. various kinds of PAC groups, and you had, at least in your reelection campaign back in uh, 2012. You're not getting it this time. Yeah. Why not? Well, part of the reason is that if you establish yourself as somebody that's independent and conservative in the way you vote, sometimes uh, some of these groups like to see you beholden to their beliefs, and uh, you know that's just not how we've worked. Now, have you talked to some of these PACs? I mean, they, they're not giving you money this time. Have you or other people in your staff or in your office talked to them and said, hey, what's going on? How come we're not hearing from you this time? No, I mean, we, we've talked to uh, several groups. I haven't been as prolific of a fundraiser this term. I've been focused on doing my job, and I think that if you do a good job, people will reward you with re-election. Now, have these PACs been seeing some of the other national stories that have been done, places like on the Hill, that basically put you on a list of congressmen most likely to get beat for re-election? Well, I think that there's been a lot of good propaganda put out there uh, by the opposition and uh, that are connected with some of those sources. So we'll see how that all shakes out come election day. Now, it appears that Senator Tracy, at least going by all the older numbers that have been out for, for fundraising and spending, has outraised you at least three to one. Money's not the only thing in politics, but right. how do you compete against that kind of a disadvantage? Well, I mean, in his case, if you don't have a good message, it takes a lot of money to try to sell it, and I think that uh, he's going to have a hard time even with the amount of money that he has. Congressman Scott Desjardins is our guest here on Inside Politics. Back to continue our conversation with him after this break.